Welcome to the IBEX Method Podcast. We are your hosts, Steve Beta and Adam Fouts, and this week we're going to discuss, in our opinion, one of the most foundational points when starting your training, and that's finding out your why. So what are you thinking, Adam? What's, what's this why? So what is the why? It's, it's the purpose behind everything you do. It's, um, you know, what is it? Why do you go to work every day? It's not because you need to make money. It's because there's something that's driving you to go to go to work, you know, whether it's your family, whether it's your ability to be successful. I mean, obviously everybody wants to make money. Maybe your why is money. You're motivated by money, you know, but um, yeah. So I think the why is, it's just, what is it that motivates you? What is the thing that you're driving towards? Um, and that's going to be the thing that helps you to be disciplined. Uh, well, as you're going through your training, um, so let's kind of, I guess, dig into that deeper. Um, so for you, Steve, what, what kind of sports and activities have you done in the past? And the what was thing, the goal? Go ahead. I say, I've always been big into track and field. Track and field has always been probably one of my favorite things to do because there's so many whys that you could kind of dig into. Like, like why do you work hard? You could be for your team. You want to be a team player. You could um, just want to improve yourself. You want to have the best times. You could compete against yourself you compete against others you can shoot for big goals like whether it's conference championship district regional state or even national if you're good enough so there's just a lot of different things you go into for that so what about you yeah i think i think it's a good point i think when i was younger my why was to try to get to state and track go cross country um you know wanted to set records into that nature my why behind that was you know my mom was a single mother she could barely you know she can't afford five kids to go to college, basically. So I'm like, hey, if I could get a running scholarship. So my why is why not run hard, run well, and get a running scholarship so that my mother doesn't have to pay for my education, you know, or struggle and, I, you know, things of that nature. So as a kid, that's kind of, that was my focus. Now, most recently, you know, we've talked about this before. I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, um, trying to improve my health. So a lot of the things I do now, like everything I do is based on, improving myself for my future so I could be there for my family so I could be there for myself uh yeah just so that I can watch my family grow up I could be healthy and, and I can enjoy the experience as as we're going through you know life together really so yeah and I, th I think one of the biggest things that um I want people to take away from this like it doesn't have to be, be one thing one thing doesn't have to be your why I, I feel like I'm at a point right now in my life and my fitness goals and stuff where I had to take a step back and kind of figure out what's next on my plate. I'm always really, dri I'm driven by competition, whether it's with myself or with others. So I'm trying to pick out what's going to be best for me. Cause I was really into Olympic lifting for a while. I really enjoyed doing that, but just the frequency of training was like just wearing hard on my body with where I'm at with my job and um, a lot of the medical things me and my wife are going through right now. So just kind of trying to figure out what's going to like drive me to, for motivation. Like I, I think um, training for looks like doing like bodybuilding, I think that'd be fun, but I feel like that's very limiting for me because I feel like as, as soon as I get to a certain point, I'm happy. Like as, as long as my abs come out a little bit, I have a little bit of definition. I'm happy. I've never been really driven by like getting huge, but I feel like I could use that towards something like maybe powerlifting or something, something a little different something that I could kind of train around rather than um like I said the Olympic weightlifting was just really hard on my neck and my shoulders and stuff with a lot of my inflammation from my esophagitis. Um anytime I get a little extra like overhead work, it always just tighten up and I'd have trouble swallowing for days. So it's really hard when your why is kind of getting blocked out by something that's holding you back. So maybe with some proper rehab exercises and everything, I'd get back to that. But I, I feel like finding a stepping stone to get to back to that point would be really exciting for myself. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And I, yeah, I can definitely relate to that. I think that, um, yeah, I think it's just, it's kind of crazy. You know, you, you hit on the idea that the why is, it's, it's kind of a moving thing, right? Like, you know, five years ago, six years ago, um, uh, again, I was I'm going through all these treatment cycles for Crohn's disease, and my body's so worn out that I could barely even walk. And some days I couldn't walk. Um, so my first why was like, I just want to be able to. I remember I had to go to work. Um, I'm exhausted, 
and like I'm, I'm ending my time in the Marine Corps. We find out we have a, a child on the way, and I, I used to work in a warehouse. Um, and I'm trying to move equipment, but now I need other people to help me do this stuff. Like I'm barely, I'm struggling to move five pounds. I'm struggling to move ten pounds or whatever. And I'm like, I just want to be able to hold my child, you know. And the doctors like, hey, like don't don't work out because it's going to be a lot of strain on your body as you're going through this treatment cycle. Like, give us some time. Um, so my why at that point was like, okay, I got a kid on the way. I want to be able to be somewhat strong and capable to hold this child, you know? Um, so I had, I had a treatment, like fast forward, I don't know, like maybe nine months or something like that, have a treatment. And I'm like, okay, like my, like I would have neurological side effects to the point that my, like my legs would stop responding and I would just be like sliding across the floor, trying to move around the house type stuff. And um, other times I would just sleep on the living room floor because I just, I'm too exhausted. My legs aren't working, so I can't go anywhere. Um, but I remember getting a treatment one time and I get home, I go to bed, I wake up and I'm like, this is the worst I'm ever going to feel. Like, this is my lowest of lows. Like, I need to do something. So I literally just rolled over from being on my back and I'm like, let me just do one modified push up. Like, let me just start there, you know? And then uh, I went from that to, um, okay, let me try to do five, you know, and as time goes on, I'm like, okay, let me, let me get my leg strength back. So how, how do I do that? Let me like use the rail and climb up these steps and use my legs as best as I can and just going through this whole process. So it went from like, okay, I, I want to be able to hold my child to, I just want to be able to move, you know, like these are my whys and all that built up to, you know, having the strength to hold my child as my child was born. And then I'm like, hey, you know what? Like I can I can walk effectively again. I wonder if I can jog. So my next why was let me just try to jog hundred meters. Okay, let's make it four. Let's make it a half mile. Let's make it a mile, you know, and then so the the why just kind of kept shifting, but it also like every step built upon itself. So here I am five years down the road and I'm like, okay, like my body's accepting the treatment now. Um, I'm re my recovery is doing pretty good after every treatment so I can work out I can do some body weight stuff now I want to my, my next why I was like can I improve my diet can I improve my strength to become a better runner because that's a component that I'm missing in my in my uh, in my experience and two I want to know if I can be disciplined enough in my diet and what I can actually eat now that my body is almost in remission um, so I went through that program and I, you know, I was able to get back to the gym, do strength training and, uh, go through a diet program and kind of see what my body accepted, what it truly rejected. And, um, so I went through that and, and like you mentioned, right, like, you know, having a goal. So for me, I'm like, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to improve my diet. I want to improve my strength. But then I was like, I also need something to kind of hold me accountable. So. Um, again, I see myself as a runner. I don't see myself as anything outside of that. Um, but I ended up doing a physique competition. Let me just do a physique competition so that I can challenge myself and hold myself accountable to achieving my my goal of uh, gaining strength, improving my diet, and trying to overcome this disease. You know, um, then I ended up placing in this competition, never knowing that I would achieve such another thing. You know, and now my why is just sustaining what it what it's been that I've been able to accomplish with my strength, with my, um, with my diet and things. So I, I don't know, it's very, it's a lot, it's a lot of information, but just to hit on the, hit on the idea of what you mentioned, right? Like it's the why could change. Um, there could be many whys. It's not, it's not like a one size fits all, but I think it's important to understand what it is that you want to work toward. What is it that drives you? What is it that motivates you? And then establishing a plan to help support that thing that you want to go after. Yeah. So yeah, I know one of my whys were recently, especially with you running again, my wife loves to run. Um, ever since I've had these esophagus problems, anytime I run for more than like maybe like 200 meters, I just, my throat just gets real dry, tight, can't swallow. But it's like that kind of lowers that motivation for doing any type of distance running. So I'm like, mm -hmm. well, do I want to get out on the track and maybe start doing some sprints again? maybe train for like a hundred meter or just get your 40 time down, just something simple like that. But just, um, if you don't have like 
that motivation because of that, it's just really hard to get going. Like you were saying, you were at your lowest of lows. Um, where I was at in that process, I got through like my first um, eight or nine procedures to get my esophagus open back up. I was like, I need to go to the gym. Like whether, like I, I was like worried. I was like, man, I'm going to look like a wimp. Like I'm just going to go back in. Like all that progress I made over the last few years is just completely gone. So I was like, you know what? I just need to like suck it up and just go. So I, I went um, to this gym up the street from my house. It was real close, so I couldn't make any excuse for myself. I was like, all right, it's right up the street. I'm going to go. Started pr- like just even doing like presses with like 10 pound weights. Like I used to warm up with like the 45s. I'm like, all right, this really sucks. But then like every week I'd see myself getting stronger. And actually for the first few weeks, obviously I felt like, shit to be honest there's no other way to say it. i just felt like shit um felt tight at the end of the day but as i kept working out all those symptoms started kind of alleviate a little bit everything's got a little stronger started getting my strength back everything was going awesome and then i even got to the point where i was squatting again my squat numbers were getting back up to almost um body weight and a half roughly and i was like yeah i could probably go back to olympic lifting again so I kind of jumped headfirst back into that. I went to go see my coach the one day, overdid it, set me back. But it, it was really good just to get back in there. Like it showed me as if I kept, if I keep going that way, I get where I want to go. Mm-hmm. But like I said, just, you have to find those motivation, the motivation, those specific drivers, like what's going to motivate you, what's going to be reinforcing for you. Cause if you're not reinforced by something, you're just going to get burned out so fast. Cause I think that's where I was at recently with the gym I was just kind of going through the motions I was like I'm not really training for anything why am I doing this so more recently I've taken a couple weeks off just to refresh um getting through a lot of medical stuff again but like I said I'm in the process of finding that why again and that's it's rough like when you don't know what you want to go for and what you want to do it's it's hard so put a lot of my energy into this podcast lately and still doing my research on different areas and it's just just kind of exciting to have something fresh again, but just finding that why is hard right now. I just know I want to be healthy. I want to continue to get stronger. I want to heal from from these illnesses, and it's scary and exciting all at once. It really is. But I, I think it's okay to admit when you're having trouble finding a why. And I I think that's having friends like you and um, people have the same interests as you to root you on and help you find that why sometimes is really important. Yeah, I think I think you hit on some things too. Like it, your why doesn't need to be this extravagant thing. It could be as simple as I just want to be healthier than I was yesterday. You know, and um, I know you're a family man, and that's kind of what, where your energy and focus has been since. And I think that's a great. Uh, I, I know since we've talked, that's been another focus of yours. Like, yeah, I want to be. <laughs> my why is my wife, and you know we just got married, and we just got a house, and we got all these things that we want to do and accomplish. Um, I think it's okay to have that downtime too, to where it's not like, oh, it's hoorah, you know, like get after it. It's, um, yeah, let me kind of step back, kind of reevaluate where I am. Um, and I think that downtime and that rest time is also a good time to kind of recover as well, you know, so. So I know um, your your new why is, um, well, your new, your new goal, run that sub five mile. Why? Why do you want to do that? What, what's your why? For, <laughs> like, let's, let's go. Let's go right in because I'm. I'm just really curious because I know you've always been interested in it, and I've heard you talk about. It, but like, why is that a big deal to you? Yeah, it's kind of funny you say that because the idea of like running sub fives again, um, it's kind of crazy to me. I, brought, I think I brought it up to you five years ago. I'm like, hey man, like I'm getting back into running. Like, let me. I wonder if I could do this, you know? And. uh now it's like, all right, so basically what happened, I ended up burning out high school. Um, I ran a 459 one time and it was contested. Like it's not, I, like, and I can't, I can't find the race anywhere to dictate whether or not what my actual time was. Um, but in, in theory, I, I guess technically I never, I never technically broke five minutes in, in the mile because there's no document, there's no recording. And when I say a mile, I say 1600 meters. So that's, that's what I'm equating that to. But um, so in, in, in my process of getting out of the, of the Marine Corps, um, 
they have this thing called recovery care coordinator. They kind of help you transition. They do all this stuff. One of the programs that they have is called military adaptive sports program. And ultimately my goal was as I, when I got out, I learned about it and I wish I would have known about it while I was in because um, I feel like it would have been one last thing I could have done to kind of help to overcome my disease and help in my, my continuity of care or continuum of care of a service member with an illness. And, um, but they just recently opened up to veterans, so it's not even active duty anymore. Uh, and this, this military adaptive sports is for uh, wounded, ill, and injured service members and now veterans. And to me, I'm like, hey, I'd really love to learn how to get into this as a veteran. Um, so I recently have been contacted to, to at least apply to compete. And to me, I'm like, hey, if I can compete, that'd be great. But if I could compete at a level that's greater than when I was when I was at my prime, I think that'd be. Um, just just something amazing you know it's like one again it's another way of overcoming this disease but then two I don't know just solidifying something in my mind that I felt like I, I, I should have accomplished I thought I accomplished but it's contested you know so um, just being able to challenge my body um, that's really it I don't know if that, that answers your question or not but no totally um, like I kind of understand especially like shooting for those times in high school like that's that's all you kind of focus on like and I feel like when I don't want to say this in like the wrong way, but when you're at your prime, when everything's healthy, everything's going good, don't be afraid for that why to be like that goal to be really lofty. Cause I, I feel like it's really easy to hit those exact goals. Like I told myself, mm-hmm. I was like, all right, I'm going to be on podium at state by my senior year. I made it to the podium, my very last race, my senior year. It's like, fourth place <laughs> so <laughs> what, what wasn't first it wasn't eighth i was right in the middle right there so i i hit my goal which is exciting what if i shot higher like what if it was what if just podium wasn't good enough like might have been the same result but who knows like I, I feel like it's also who you surround yourself with i went i was in um Gerard with you for those those years when we ran and then my senior year as a McDonald, and just like the level of competition I had there mm-hmm. and the, the knowledge of the coaches just like raised my 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 productivity like through the roof compared to what where I was at Gerard. I dropped like over half a second off in my hundred meter time. I dropped well over a second off my two hundred meter time. Like I, I think it's mixed between your goals, your actions, and I mean, when you're young and you don't know better, it's your coaching. So yeah. I, it's finding the combination of all three of those things that hit those goals. Like, I know this, we end up kind of going talking about goals, but sometimes the goal is the why. And I, and I feel like that's what most people that might be listening to this are shooting for. Hey, my goal is to lose this much weight. Why? Because I want to be healthy. Mm-hmm. Why? Like, Next week, we're going to be talking to Richie Stout, strongman, going for another strongman title. Like, why does he want to do that? Like, that's a lot of stress on your body. That's exciting, though. Like, he's a beast. Like, what drives you to do that is the goals. Like, mm-hmm. it always comes back to a goal, especially with athletic stuff. So, I think it's just really exciting to talk about and kind of pick up everyone's brain. And I know we've um, talked about this with Vince and Greg so far. But I think it's just going to be exciting to see everybody else's why as we go along to these different athletes and coaches because everyone's going to be different. And I think it's just um, – it just blows my mind how um, stuff that you would never think would be a motivator or driver is driving or motivating someone else. Yeah, no, it's true. It's very – it's infectious. And uh, one thing you really touched on, and I kind of hit on it earlier, was you know understanding what your why is and then – identifying a plan, putting a plan behind it. And you were like, hey, I want to get the podium. And I don't, I don't know if you cognitively knew this as a, as a child, like, hey, this isn't working for me at this school, but if I go to the school next door, like they're going to give me a plan that's going to help me achieve that goal. Yes, um, with, because, like, I didn't transfer just for sports. I, there, there's a lot of other factors that were involved with it, but life just kind of took me in that direction. Like mm-hmm. it just kind of worked out. That's where I ended up because there was like, three other schools I could have ended up and I ended up at that one for some reason and it 
worked out because they had the best track program. I'm not going to complain about that, but sometimes it's just things align right for you. Yeah, and I, and I think it, I think it really hits on the idea. Like for me, like I went through this diet and strength program, and I was like, okay, I, I know this is the final thing that I need to elevate my running, you know, and um, and sure enough, like I, I found somebody that. Um, you know, they did a physique competition, but the way they did it was through improving their diet and their strength. And I'm like, okay, like, I can see a picture of you <laughs> 120 days ago and you're not in shape. And here you are 120 days later, you're in shape and you have a trophy in your hand. Um, it's not Photoshop. This is real life. You know, like I see a video of you walking on stage and um, now you're helping other people do that. And I'm like, it only makes sense to me that if I want to achieve strength and diet improvements, that I would find align myself to somebody that's done it and then implement that plan to help me get to where I want to be, you know? And I think that, um, you know, the school you're talking about, just they naturally, they had the right coach in place. They had a program, they had the right people. They understood how to tailor the needs to each individual athlete while also, also catering to the masses, you know? So um, I think that's another thing too, is like, okay, it's, it's important to know the why, but then the next step is, well, how do we do it? What's the, what's the plan? Who, who do I align myself with to, to, to reach that goal? And you mentioned that too, right? Like just surrounding yourself with the right people so that you can have the right mindset. You can have the right, um, you know, the right motivation, the right drive. And, and it does become infectious, infectious. I mean, that whole school, like, in that program, everyone did well. Like they, they blew our school out of the water 100 percent of the time, you know. Um, so it is very infectious. Like your why is infectious. Put a, a plan in place to support that. It's only going to like set fire to other people around you to want to pursue more and do more. And, um, well, actually, touch, touching even more on um, having the right people around. Like you were saying, like you wanted to get that strength aspect but um, your body wasn't like prepared for something like a power lifting or an extreme, like, like athletic performance specific training. So you found Vince bodybuilding. So, Hey, let me get these, let me get all my muscles built up the right way slowly. Mm -hmm. And well, not even slowly, it went pretty fast, but it was, it was a way to taper you into it. Like yep. they introduce you, get everything built back up. So I feel like at this point now, if you wanted to transition to something more specific, to build that strength more like more power movements like for training for a 15 or 1600 meter race like you do a lot more lifting specific stuff whether rather um than starting with that in the first place when your body was feeling really weak and broken down now you have this foundational muscles to kind of like push you to where you need to be now yep yeah i think that's you know ties into this the whole idea of the ibex method you know like like, I know I needed strength. So at first when I was doing my treatments, my strength was just literally doing a, a modified push-up. Then it became a full push-up. And then um, I was like, hey, you know what? Like my, my muscular endurance is increasing. Maybe I can walk 100 meters, 200, you know? So yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that um, what's, what's unique about this process now is that I, I was looking at just improving my strength in the gym because I, there was one point I, I go to the gym, I'd strain, like I'd overdo, like you mentioned, I started bleeding, I'd start having inflammation. Um, I couldn't even do sit-ups because the inflammation in my gut from my Crohn's disease, and I, you know, so, um, but it's been pretty cool to kind of overcome that through, you know, medical intervention as well as dietary intervention and just somebody, a coach walking me through the process. Um, what was unique now is that as I'm, approaching this this goal of the, the sub five minute mile um let's see a week after and i'm just kind of going on a tangent here another goal of mine was to run the uh the, the marine corps marathon 50k i got to do it on a whim with no training besides the strength training that i had that carried me through you know 32 miles wait let, let me oh wait before you continue <laughs> let, let, let me give people some like perspective on what was going on that week you had your treatment that week and you text me, you're like, I can't even like change my kid's diaper right now. I feel like shit. So I'm going to the gym. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, and then you're like, two days later, you're like, I'm running a 50K. I was like, this dude's going to destroy himself. Like, I'm all about like going for things and 
but I'm also about self-preservation to a point. I thought you were going to really mess yourself up for a second, but you're doing great, man. Like, thank you. Yeah. That, that experience is just very enlightening because, um, again, like what you just said contradicted who I was five years ago. Like, like, yes, the joint pain was so bad in my hands. I looked at my wife, I was like, look, I need you to change this diaper. And I'm going to go to the gym because I need to work this stuff out in my body and let my body know like, Hey, like, let's get moving. Let's get going. Because the moment I stop, and this is like, what I told, I was like the moment I stop, I'm going to let the stiffness, this joint pain, all this stuff creep in and my body's going to deteriorate. And I, I can't let that happen. <laughs> then randomly I get invited to run a 50 K and I, I took it because like, this was a dream of mine. I was like, it's, it's absolutely insane because I, I, I believe in building up for things and, um, it, it really showed me the importance of strength training. And then, um, yeah, I did a time trial for my, it's a 1500 meter run and, you know, my GPS clocked me at a five minute pace, but I mean, I hit, I hit the 15 mile, 1500 meter mark at 524. I'm like, this is insane. This is all based on just lightweight, you know, just going to the gym, going to the strength conditioning program. Well, um, like I said, when I, I first got introduced to a strength coach initially. Like I always did like some strength training after I graduated co like college the first time. And that's the first time I really got access to it. And then I started lifting at Nash Dog Barbell. Um, hopefully we'll have Chad on here pretty soon to talk. Um, he put on, he helped me put on like almost 20 pounds of muscle. I wasn't running at the time actively. I was doing a lot of research on decathlon and working on throwing specifically and kind of, picking up some of those deficiencies that I just didn't know about. And I was coaching at the time too. So I was just really trying to gear up for that stuff. So went to the track the one day, just, I was like, all right, I'm going to work out, get a couple time trials. I had my friend tie me 11, four, no blocks. I, that was my PR running out of blocks in high school. So it was just really, really odd to jump out of nowhere and be like, Oh, I just ran the time I was running in high school, just lifting yeah so it's like I, i've I've always thought it'd be interesting to revisit that but that takes a lot of like time i don't think i'm at that point right now where i'm very motivated to go back and try to run sub 11 which is insane so that's that's pretty good man but, yeah I'm, I'm, yeah go ahead i would say it just it just blows your mind like how much like the different levels of training like I, i'd always see like some guys that go through the school we went to they bulk up a lot be real fast like maybe freshman or sophomore year bulk mm -hmm. up more and get extremely slow the next few years and i was like oh weights must be terrible for you but just no one was managing it correctly i'm not saying nobody but the people that were training for what i was doing yeah. weren't having long-term success with it they'd either be getting injured or slowing down or getting stiff and tight but when i was lifting at Nash dog, I was 20 pounds more, just as flexible, if not more flexible and stronger and faster. Yeah, that's amazing, man. Yeah, it's crazy because I, when I, when I did do, I, I got, I got sold on the strength conditioning side when I, I don't know, I was going back to high school, a, a kid challenged me. He's like, Hey, if you, if you come out to the wrestling team, I'll go do cross country. And I was like, okay, bet, you know? And I ended up taking his spot on the varsity team for the 125 weight class. He quit wrestling, didn't show up for cross country, but, you know, so wrestling is a winter sport and then you get into track. And my first race, I ran a five minute mile. Like, I'm like, the only thing behind me at this point is nothing but strength and, you know, anaerobic exercises from wrestling. And I'm like, I'm sold on this, but then you, know, you go through your training, you trust your coaches and the plan just didn't work out. And I ended up, overtraining and running, not re maintaining the strength component that I had, and I am burning out. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's interesting. It really is, but. Well, um, was, was that bad when Walt, was Walt coaching the strength for you guys for wrestling back then? Yeah, so he, he would, um, he would have, like, a pre, uh, like, you can meet him at the gym before you actually went to go to practice. So that's what I would do, yeah. Yeah, because, yeah. um. I remember he was our sprint coach at Gerard and I think that he was the best part of that whole program because um, he was a very big advocate of trying to be, all right, we need to be training specific. We can't be doing all these extra workouts and burning these kids out. But like, I, I see what 
our other coaches were trying to do by bringing the team together, but it was and it was burning everybody out. <laughs> like yeah. I said, I'm not trying to trash talk anyone, but like I remember Walt. Like I don't want to blame any of my um, times or anything on him because he was actually very focused on everything, like the actual goals at hand. So mm-hmm. it was just it's interesting. You could be in the wrong place with the right coach and still somehow land off the mark. Yeah, there's, you know, there's politics and stuff involved in that. And um, I, I just think it's funny. Like, we're doing a lot of reminiscing. And these people are probably like, oh, here they go. These has-beens trying to, you know. But yeah. I'm really, we just we like, bring damn, it all. I, I am a has-been. <laughs> oh, good. I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> you know, to me, I, I, I like to look at the past as a learning curve, you know. And I'm like, this is what I learned. This is what I wish I would have done differently. Um, and here's how I'm implementing that into my future, you know. And I'm like, now that I have the resources and understanding of like, Hey, you know what? Yes. This, I mean, if all you got is what you got in front of you, it's all you got. You know what I mean? But you know, we're kind of in the information age and I'm like, Hey, if I got somebody that knows how to do strength and have a good diet, I should probably figure out what they're doing because that's something I want to implement into my, my regime. And I'm like, if I want to get faster, I should probably look at the guy that's running a four thirty mile, you know, figure out what is he doing? How can I implement that into my routine? How can I create a plan? You know, so um, that's what's interesting. Like, I'm establishing these whys, but then I'm also finding the individuals that can help me achieve it through the program that they went through. And and it's not always like cookie cutter. It's like, hey, this is the foundation. This is what we're going to do. And we'll continue to tailor it until we hit your goal, you know. So um, it's interesting. That's all. Yeah. Well, like I say, going back to reminiscing about the past, like you said, bringing everything from your past to learn about it and apply it to now, I think that's more important than anything. Because um, even though I, I made it to where I wanted to be in track, at least, and I'm very hap- happy and thankful for that. But I was able to apply that when I was coaching, when I started coaching junior high kids. I coached in McDonald for seven years and I had a lot of very good athletes. I had a lot of really natural athletes, but also I was able to help get these kids with no foundation work their way up to be some of the best runners um i had this one kid danny um i remember he came out for cross country his first day just wasn't too sure about the whole thing at all he was just kind of nervous and his first race ever i think it was a two mile race um he comes out and i think it was like somewhere around like 16 or 18 minutes like and he was like dying. He was like, "Coach, I don't know if I could do this." <laughs> like, <laughs> like, but I was like, "I was like, oh, keep going, man." I was like, "Like, you did great. Like, you've only been doing this for about a week or two. Like, because he came out late. I didn't have a full team. I had four guys my first, um, first few days of practice. Then he came out and gave me my full team. So I was really excited. And then just being able to like help him with his foundations and motivate him and find ways for him to enjoy being there, like." I saw that continue and it was, it was really interesting because I, I saw him almost fall out a few times, but like he had so much improvement between his seventh and eighth grade year. Like he ended up running like low twelves, like, which wow. is, which is huge in comparison, like placing top at all these invitations and stuff. A couple of years later, makes it to varsity, um, does pretty good, does very good the next year. And just ends up blowing up, doing phenomenally. He was one of the best runners in McDonald history now. Like, wow. and he, not a big name. No one, not someone would be like, oh, because everyone knows the Kunkels were amazing. Like, if you're from this area, like, everyone knows the Kunkels are just always awesome and great family and everything. But seeing someone that kind of came from like no running background, really, just to enjoy it and do enough to get to the place where he needed to be and, lead his team to play some great at state and be on the podium and stuff. That's just, that's just so exciting to me, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think that ties into the why of the IBEX, you know, like you have a passion for helping people and making the most of you know, their situations. And for me, it's, it's kind of the same thing. And I don't know, we've, I guess we've always just been that way. Always trying to, um, I don't know, pull resources together to, to help people become more informed and encourage one another. And I, I think that's what I'm excited most about what we're doing. Um, you know, we're going to have, you know, we're going to have my coach on for the, the program that I was on. We're going to have some people talk about, you know, mindset and stuff like that. People we've worked with. And, um, 
just a lot of different resources to where, you know, if you are trying to consider your why, you know, we're going to give you people, we're going to put people in front of you that can help you, you know, potentially develop a plan for your why and achieve those goals. You know, we'll talk about things that can help you um, implement, you know, the, the very things that um, are required to, to achieve those goals. So I'm looking forward to that as well through this, through this process. You got anything else? No, I think that's about it, man. Yeah, no, I'm excited. And then again, just to reiterate, I mean, your kawaii, you, you could have many whys. I think that the first thing is to at least choose something that's going to drive you and then find a way to develop a plan behind that. Yeah, well, find something that you enjoy. Yes. Yeah, that's that's going to be the biggest thing. Like, you could say you want to lose weight, but if you don't like running, if you hate running, you might learn to like it okay, but you not might you might not be motivated. You might want to go to a gym. You might want to work out, do weight training. Like you got to find stuff that's actually fun and motivating for you. Hey, you might like soccer. Go play some soccer. Go join a rec league. Like there's so many ways of going about hitting your goals. You mm -hmm. just got to find what you enjoy and just find that why. All right. Well, thank you for your time. We're, uh, Adam Fowles, Steve Beta. This is the IBEX Method Podcast, and we'll see you soon.